Is there anything satanic about the pool? Remember, like I said, Omoto Fufuin has Pool of Bethesda. This is the Pool of Bethesda located here in Mercy City, Christ Christmas Land Deliverance Ministries, Warida to State, Nigeria. Just like the biblical Pool of Bethesda located in Jerusalem, this is a place of mercy, a place of salvation. Enough, I said, is enough. A place of healing and deliverance and a place of breakthrough. So, viewers, whatever situation you're passing through, just remember that the same God who healed the man that was paralyzed for 38 years at the pool of Bethesda, as recorded in John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 15, can do the same for you. If only you can come and have your own water from this pool of Bethesda. That's a simple question. If you read your Bible, was a man healed with the water or Jesus was the one that healed the man? We are discussing that today, but just for you to get the context of where we are going to with this. So what is this water really about? Interesting. As revealed by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit and under a divine instruction, Prophet Jeremiah Motofain established this pool of Bethesda after his visit to Jerusalem. And ever since the inception of this pool, so many outstanding miracles have taken place here. So many healings, demonstration of God's power, prophecies and testimonies have taken place from this pool. Iginla has pool of Bethesda. There, some, some people have asked, uh, 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 is there anything satanic about the pool? Even Rita Bai has pool of Bethesda. As you dip your leg inside this water, any sickness you come with it will die forever. Let's look at the pool of Bethesda of the person of Joshua Iginla and listen to what he says right here. So, some people have asked, uh, 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 is there anything satanic about the pool? And I say, it's people with myopic, pedomic, and microscopic mentality that should begin to demonize water. The Bible is speaking like what I thought yesterday, that out of the waters, he created the bears of the feed. Out of the waters, he created the whales and fish. Out of the water, the earth was created. The mystery of the water is something else. And that's why he said, I am the spring of living water. And for 38 years, a man stood by the pool of Bethsaida. And there was no miracle until the angel of the Lord steered the water. But can I say to you, this pool of Bethsaida is not a pool that angels are steering the water. It's a pool that the angels are dwelling in the water. And so they are waiting for you. Whether you are 1,000, you are here in this pool. Miracles must happen. Now you see him talking about the fact that even angels, right now the angels are not coming to stir the water, but the angels are even living in the water. Sometimes yourself, make sure you listen to your idols very well because I don't see that anything that happens there so far as is spiritual to actually be of God. Then there's the cross of Jesus. I have gone to this place. We went to Jerusalem and the shores. It's not too far from Calvary. There is close to Calvary where Jesus was crucified. The pool of Bethesda is very close. So you, you now realize the cross of Jesus represents the place of sacrifice, and the healing pool is the grace of God. So this prophetic act is not to be repeated. I have said earlier: if you repeat a prophetic act, you invite the demonic. You be, people begin to have intercourse with the spirit of lawlessness. So, what is the prophetic act today? What's the message of this act? The healing pool. Apart from being the grace of God that flow from the cross of God. Oh, my Satalia. The healing pool is an end time church where you step into the power of the cross baptizes you. Now, if you go back to scripture and study John 5, I'm going to read that, of course, to you here. What was happening at that time at the pool of Bethesda, which was said to be angels staring up the water? There are actually different school of thoughts on that. First of all, it was actually a pagan practice, or would I say out of superstition, based on what happens right there at the pool. That's why if you read some of your scriptures as well, the part where it says that angels stirred up the water is being removed and you will see a footnote trying to make you understand that that was not part of the original manuscript of scripture. You see right there a pagan practice as well happening in the church as at then. But let's assume that, okay, let's agree since your Bible also has it there that the angels came and stirred up the water. What does Hebrews 1 make you understand about Jesus 
and the angels. Think about that for a moment. Jesus himself is by far greater than the angels. Even though him coming in humanity as well make him, made him a little lower than the angels. But Hebrews as well make us understand very well the difference between Jesus and the angels. As time goes on as well, I will take my time to show you Jesus in the pages of the Old Testament. And I think it's going to be a very interesting experience for you to see how Jesus is uncovered in the Old Testament. Even though he's been referred as an angel. But you will make sense of that as well as we go on. So that's just one fact I got to find out, saying that the angels are now living in the water. So just imagine for a moment that he has a pool in his church where people allegedly as well pay 50,000 naira as at then when he started the pool for them to come for their healings and deliverance and all that. These things are not free, okay? But imagine that the pool of Bethesda is there, dry and empty. Ask yourself a question. Where the pool, of course, is over there in Jerusalem. Nothing is happening there. How come you have a pool in Nigeria that has the angels? So the angels left the Jerusalem and then came to Nigeria in different your different pools to be doing signs and wonders. So you see now that what they're doing is just mainly using scriptural terms. And uh, ask yourself a question. Is your allegiance to Jesus or your allegiance is to angels? Because whatever it is that might be walking in the waters, you might you have to ask yourself what powers are they walking with in the water? If you read the scriptures right there in John um, chapter 5, if you notice something really clearly, the man that was healed at the pool of Bethesda, how many years did the man spend at that particular pool waiting for him to be healed? 38 years. Now go back to the Old Testament and ask yourself a question. Even though God had promised that um, because of the unbelief of the people of Israel, instead of them spending 40 years in the wilderness they are going to spend 40 years do you know that they actually spent do you know that they actually spent 38 years for the generation that god wanted to be fizzled out before the ones that of course would be ushered into the promised land had to come about yes of course the scriptures are right here on your screen what am i trying to make you understand right here one thing that people often ignore is that this miracle happens that it says a feast it happened on a jewish holiday but the other interesting thing is that it gives the detail that this man had been paralyzed or invalid for 38 years and if there's a detail in scripture it's there for a reason it's not just there to add color sure. i mean god doesn't waste words right it's there for a reason and the interesting thing with that is that uh, deuteronomy tells us that israel wandered in the wilderness 38 years because of their unbelief so basically his being unable to walk for 38 years he's is about Israel being in the wilderness 38 years and dying in the desert. And so what he's actually going to do, Jesus is going to do, he's going to make this comparison with the religious leaders, which is, are you going to be like the generation that died in the wilderness because of unbelief and doubt and grumbling? Or are you going to be like the Joshua and the Caleb and the generation that has faith to go in and take the land? Right. I would advise you as well to study more about the story of the pool of Bethesda. So you get to understand when I talk about the superstition that was also with it. That's why some of your scriptures do not have that and some of them have it. But in the earlier sense, that particular idea of angels staring up the waters was not there. But of course, it might have been written in the scriptures based on the popular belief at that time. Jesus coming into the picture, the scriptures didn't just mention the man's age for no reason. It was actually for a purpose. So Jesus coming into the picture, knowing quite well that this is what this man wants and is asking him, do you really want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? That should also send you a signal, my dear friends. So those who are actually practicing this whole idea of pool of Bethesda and all that, you are still in unbelief. You have not even found God yet. Your syncretism with the uh, angel it's going to be on the stop yes of course my dear friend so you see what i'm talking about here some are still living in the shadows and that's also the problem we have today in christianity in the shadows when jesus himself uh, did you see anywhere recorded that after jesus healed that man at the pool that they were still having that experience of uh saying that angels stirred up the waters and then people were being healed that water does not that place even though it exists as well there's no pool there even if there's a pool there nothing is going to be happening there because jesus ended it all jesus is the fulfillment of scripture so why don't you look up to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith? You are still looking for the pool of Bethesda. And because of your gullibility as well, your pastors have created pools by themselves to uh, merchandise and capitalize on your gullibility. Again, my dear friends, learn to know scriptures because scriptures is the basis for which you can call yourself a Christian. Let's go to the personal prophet, Aritabai.